Welcome to BetterThanJordan.com. It's your boy Lucrecio back at you live from the epicenter. All right, just a, a quick video real quick about uh, how I believe the Cleveland Cavaliers will build a basketball dynasty in the NBA in the next five or so years, okay? Um, honestly, with LeBron James returning to the team, a lot of people are starting to sleep on Cleveland. They're saying, oh, just because LeBron's back, they're still not good enough or whatever. They may not win the East. The Bulls can win the East. And I'm just here to say I don't believe that for one second. First of all, LeBron owns the Bulls. He's owned the Bulls since his first go-round in, in Cleveland. Nothing's going to change. The Bulls, if they, had they had had they gotten Carmelo Anthony, maybe we're maybe we're talking there. Uh, I think Carmelo Anthony would have made the Bulls contenders for the championship and possibly winners of a couple, or maybe next year or whatever. But I hardly believe that the Bulls will be able to beat LeBron and the Cavaliers as constituted currently, even with the addition of Paul Gasol, because as I said in my last video, they added Paul Gasol two years too late. So, in the Pacers, um, I do think the Pacers were a little bit of an issue for the big three, but if you look at it realistically, the Pacers have not beat, the. they never did beat the big three. They gave them some good series. So I and if you have a team that's actually built around LeBron, I don't see the Pacers being so much of a matchup problem. Because if you remember, uh, the mismatches they used to really go to are, were uh, against Chris Bosh, Chris Bosh on Hibbert, and then it kind of worked both ways. I, I don't see the Pacers, a team legitimately built around Le LeBron. I don't see, I see that team being able to match up with the Pacers better than the big three used to. So anyway, I don't see any team in the East at this point, unless something crazy happens, uh, being able to take out LeBron in the playoffs. So I do think LeBron and the Cavaliers will uh, have a dynasty over the Eastern Conference and possibly the whole NBA, and this is how. First, uh, the key is going to be big men, okay? The Cavaliers tried this once in the first go-round with LeBron, uh, copying off of the Detroit Pistons model of having like about four or five bigs on the roster that you rotate through throughout each game. All right. Uh, what they will need is our dynamic bigs. So what I mean by that is uh, they need bigs with different skill sets. So if they were able to acquire Kevin Love from the Timberwolves, which I think they will do, um, they'll have him. And if they were able to keep Anthony Bennett, those will be the stretch fours. Okay, the three-point shooters, the, the the bigs that create space. And then, in addition to those guys, you need the Anderson Verichau, and they just signed Brendan Haywood. Now, I don't know if they're going to keep Brendan Haywood. They may not keep him. His contra I thought they were trading for his contract, basically, because I believe it's expiring, and it's also, I think, over $10 million a year, which will uh, be necessary for a trade for, like, a, a Kevin Love-type player. So... But if they actually got him to keep him, he's another uh, rim protector slash uh, lane clogger type big man, all right? And now those are the types you need to go along with the stretch fours and the bigs that play away from the basket, all right? So that that's the first key uh, to building a dynasty with this Cavs team is going to be big men, having multiple big men to rotate in and out with diverse skill sets, all right? Uh, the second key is going to be Kyrie Irving. Okay, <clears throat> number one, he's going to need to develop more. Um, maybe the distributing may not be that much of an issue right away because you got LeBron there, but I do think he's going to have to develop into more of a point guard. Uh, he is going to be the one who has to ball a lot, and he's just going to not need. He's going to need to not be selfish or whatever, not be a combo guard. He's going to need to be more of a point guard, a distributor, and also. Um, because guard play is going to be a, a big factor in this, all right? The next key is the LeBron James, Andrew Wiggins dynamic. And what I mean by that is I honestly believe, and first of all, if Wiggins stays and, and he isn't part of the package that gets traded for Kevin Love, which I hope he's not because I think Wiggins is going to be the key to this in the long run, all right? Assuming he's not traded, I do believe Andrew Wiggins and LeBron James' career are going to be 
a symbiotic relationship. And what I mean by that is that uh, as Wiggins, Wiggins will need LeBron to develop into a great player in this league. All right, he's gonna need LeBron's mentorship, leadership, and he's gonna need LeBron to push him to get better quickly. All right. If I'm LeBron James, as soon as I get to Cleveland, I'm going right to Andrew Wiggins' condo, assuming he's even in Cleveland. His condo, his house, whatever he buys with his Nike money or his rookie contract, whatever he gets, I'm going to his house and I'm like, look, you work for me now. <laughs> Grabbing him, moving him into my basement, wherever, and uh, in the morning, we're getting up, go or go run or whatever. We're hitting the gym, hitting the weights, whatever I'm doing. Uh, you're doing same thing he basically did with Kevin Durant a couple seasons ago that got Kevin Durant to the next level the thing is uh, you kind of need to do it with Wiggins quicker because you need him to develop quicker uh, if you want to if you want to win this championship starting sooner than later which I mean and he's he obviously said you know it's gonna take some time but I don't believe I think he was managing expectations I think he's gonna get in there and try and gonna, gonna continue to try to win as many as possible as soon as possible um but yeah, I honestly believe that uh, he needs to make Wiggins grow up as soon as possible, and he needs to be key in making Wiggins into a great player. All right. Now, that's where Wiggins will need LeBron because if Wiggins goes to the Timberwolves, I don't see him developing into a great player. I see him could potentially even disappearing, but who knows? Okay. Now, that's the part where Wiggins needs LeBron. LeBron needs Wiggins' youth and potential later down the line to continue to contend for championships even after he starts to decline, all right? So, and what I mean by that is basically if LeBron tutors Wiggins, Wiggins will get better over time as years go by. LeBron, he's, he's 30 now. You know, sooner or later... He's going to start to go downward, you know, health-wise. Father time is undefeated, all right? But if you have essentially a player that you, uh, you know, elevated, he can continue to elevate while you go down a little bit. And, you know, the exchange or whatever of leadership and talent or whatever, uh, you'll still be in it. Basically what Tim Duncan did, okay? Tim Duncan... The team brought in the international superstar, Manu Ginobili, and they brought in Tony Parker. And as Tony Parker ascended, Tim Duncan, you know, started to decline a little bit, and they were still able to keep it going. As Tony Parker got better, better Tim Duncan declined more, and they passed over the, the leadership, and now they're still in finals year after year or deep playoff runs year after year. This is the same ultimate uh, relationship that I think LeBron James and Andrew Wiggins will have, along with Kyrie Irving and, and all those other guys, too. Um, defensively, LeBron needs to grow Wiggins, and Wiggins needs to develop into an uh, elite defender rather quickly. But both of them being on the perimeter will cause all kinds of problems for the defense, for the offenses of other teams. So they will thrive off of each other defensively. Also, um, as the seasons go by, Andrew Wiggins is going to be able to reduce the load on LeBron. Andrew Wiggins is highly touted as a shooting guard, but I, I ultimately believe that uh, he can play. Well, he, he, he was playing small forward in college. He's going to have a lot of minutes at small forward as well. And as he continues to thrive, LeBron is going to get a lot more rest on the bench during the regular season and uh, ultimately preserve his body by preserving minutes. So that Andrew Wiggins-LeBron dynamic is going to be vital in the Cavs developing uh, what could become a dynasty. Um, also, the third key, I think, is going to be the strategy that the team chooses to use. All right, I personally believe that um, any great dynasty in the NBA starts with defense. All right. I think the Cavaliers, uh, once again, should follow the example of the Detroit Pistons from the 2000s, um, where you basically have rim protectors in uh, Ben Wallace and later on Rasheed Wallace as well. And then you have a lot of um, outstanding perimeter defenders playing lockdown defense on the perimeter, which was uh, Chauncey Billups, Rip Richard Hamilton, and Tayshaun Prince. I think that's the model that you want to follow 
and you want to stay true to your defensive concepts, close out on shooters, just lock the court down or whatever, cause turnovers. And then those turnovers, uh, the Cavs need to get out and transition quite a bit, uh, you know, speed the, the flow of the game up as much as possible. And I think in LeBron's last loss to the Spurs, um, I ultimately think the NBA – basically got a a lesson about basketball from the Spurs. And I don't mean just the Heat. I think the whole NBA got a lesson. I think this is the whole reason why the Cavaliers went out and got uh, David Blatt, an international coach who was known for, like, Princeton-style offense and ball movement and crisp uh, cuts and things of that nature. I do think uh, Blatt will install that. And the Cavaliers' half-court offense, especially when it comes to the playoffs, is going to be based around a whole lot of ball movement. All right? I think those three factors uh, are going to be key in uh, the team developing what could be a, a Eastern Conference dynasty for sure and a, a dynasty in general over the whole NBA, come, you know, allowing LeBron to keep winning championships even though he's going to a young team to keep winning championships, you know, and being a contender and in it uh, basically for the rest of his career. All right, let me know what you think. If you agree, disagree, leave it in the comments section. Uh, shout out to all the new subscribers. Uh, like the video. Uh, check out betterthanjordan.com. And see you next time.